winter had settled over Italy. In the south, near Tarentum, King Magaric's army gathered in and around the city, building armed camps and outposts on the roads leading north and west. In Sicily, the bulk of Rome's legions remained in quarters under the command of one of the consuls, Lucius Julius Libo. To the north, in Latium, his co-consul, my cousin Scipio, marshaled his own legion outside the Eternal City itself, overseeing emergency recruitment efforts amidst the general panic of the Roman Senate. All parties involved were content at this point to see out the remainder of the season before resuming campaigning in the spring. But two separate events occurred to upset the uneasy balance, and they occurred almost simultaneously. Firstly, a Roman fleet sailing from Sicily had begun manoeuvres in the Straits of Otranto, hoping to cut off any attempt by the Gauls to receive more reinforcements from Greece. The Admiral, however, whose name presently remains unknown to me, seeking perhaps a quick victory and some glory, decided to sail into Apollonia itself and secure the place with a force of marines. The token garrison left behind after Magarix's crossing was quickly routed from the city, with my own reinforcements from the north still out of reach, slowed in our progress by the winter weather. These naval troops had no hope of holding the city in the face of a determined counter-attack, but it ensured nevertheless that Magarix and his army were now surrounded and alone in Italy. The second event came in the form of a slave revolt. As Roman rule around Tarentum began to collapse following the city's conquest by the Galatians, there began a mass exodus of civilians, typically the wealthier sort, as well as garrison troops, government bureaucrats and functionaries. The slave camps, while their masters made for safety, were often simply locked up, and this included the population of slave workers in an extensive mining network not far from Venusia on the road towards Beneventum. The slaves, however, capitalised on the lowered security and had soon broken their bonds and began rampaging across the countryside, pillaging local settlements and liberating more of their ilk along the way. Before long, they had assembled themselves into a hastily equipped army that stood directly between the Gauls in Tarentum and the Senate in Rome. On both sides, observers watched, waiting to see which way the horde would run, until Scipio, acting perhaps on some political coercion or military intelligence that I am unaware of, marched his legions south quite unexpectedly to deal with the slaves himself. Details of this battle are difficult to obtain, though it proved to be a victory for the Romans in spite of a spirited effort by the defenders. The remaining slaves retreated south into the hills and forests west of Tarentum, while Scipio remained near Canusium, his army licking its not insignificant wounds. This was the opportunity Magarix and his followers had been praying for, and once word reached Tarentum of the battle, the king wasted no time marshalling his comitatus to march north for a clash with Scipio and his consular army. I do not know precisely why Scipio chose to stand and fight. Perhaps his forces were too exhausted and scattered to mobilise for a march in time. Perhaps he felt it best to stand and fight even in the event of a loss in order to delay and weaken the Gauls in much the same way the legions had ground down Pyrrhus of Epirus. Perhaps it was simply pride, or maybe he suspected I, his traitorous cousin, might be found amongst the enemy's ranks and relished an opportunity to wipe what undoubtedly seemed a stain on the family's honour. In any case, Magarix drew his forces up for battle at Canusium, eschewing the usual shield wall for a more flexible checkerboard formation not unlike that employed by their Roman counterparts, and march towards his foe. I shall not go into exorbitant detail on the events of the battle here, for that may be found in other records besides this one. Suffice to say, Scipio was defeated. His hastily recruited and inexperienced legionaries were outnumbered, surrounded, and cut down in what proved to be more of a massacre than a pitched battle. As for the consul himself, he fled the field, with his fate at that time remaining uncertain. Magarix had won his first true battle on Italian soil, and news of it sent the seven hills of Rome into panic. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back once again to Rome 2 Total War, where Magarix and his trusty second-in-command, Iarchos, 
are currently stranded in Italy. Stranded because, well, um, they've taken the city of Taras. Uh, they've defeated a Roman army led by uh, Cornelius Scipio over here. Uh, but there's actually been a slave revolt, which we still need to take care of. And also, the Roman navy has retaken Apollonia on the other side of the Straits of... Uh, the Straits of... Not Messina, that's down here. The, 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 the Straits of... The, these straits here. Um, <laughs> now, we're in the process of dealing with that. In a couple more turns, um, Adkoro will arrive on the scene to retake Apollonia. Um, probably with... Actually, even sooner than that, these guys might arrive. The Stone Crows, um, led by Adgenios. Wondering whether I should hire some mercenaries to sort of, um, you know, bolster his ranks a little bit. I will cross that bridge when we get to it. We've also got Vakasi Valaunos, who is leading the huge stack of uh, Galatian legionaries, uh, which we've trained over in this direction. So reinforcements are on the way, but in the meantime, Magrix and Iarkos are kind of stranded. Um, and there's a lot of Roman armies about the place. They're all kind of milling around, being a bit indecisive at the moment. It's like they all can't quite decide what to do, where to go. And I think part of the reason for that is because they are obviously fighting a, a war in Africa. Uh, Cyrene is, remains under siege. It, the, the siege continues apace. Uh, they reinforced the defenders with some uh, with some naval units, actually. So they've got a bunch of marines in the city that can uh, aid the defenders, which has complicated matters a little bit. To the point now where I think if we want to take the city, we're either going to have to wait for the siege to run down or we're going to require the help of uh, the Egyptians. Unfortunately, the Egyptians are being a royal pain in the bum by not actually helping. Um, I've set a war coordination target on Cyrene and they seem to be just wandering around ignoring it. Like, they did briefly come over here at one point to begin with and then they got bored and wandered off again. And it's just, it's monstrously frustrating, actually, to tell you the truth. They have just taken ammonium, I think. Uh, I, I, I believe that's new. I think that was Roman previously. So they have just recently taken ammonium. So they're making some progress. It's not where I want them to. Um, either way, though, I think that's put the Romans into panic mode because now they have to deal with this and they also have to deal with this. And presumably they also have to deal with a bunch of angry Germans that have crossed the Alps up in the north here and probably whatever else is going on in the western portion of their empire that we don't know about right now. Um... So, it's a troubling time to be a Roman right now, that's for damn sure. Uh, but, yeah, also a little troubling to be a Galatian at the moment if you're stuck in Italy like these guys are. The thing is, Rome itself is tantalizingly close. It's just there. It's right over there. But I feel like it's the, the place is just going to be an absolute bear to take. They've got defensive siege defenses... They've got a big garrison. Um, I'm sure I would not be at all surprised if we were to besiege the place. Some kind of scripted event would pop off and a bunch of Roman armies would appear out of the woodwork. Um, so there is a temptation to march on Rome right now. But at the same time, I'm wary of, of basically... Yeah, just overextending myself and getting into a lot of trouble. It's a, I'm, I, I am now faced kind of with a similar problem that Pyrrhus of Epirus faced. Um, you know, I'm based down here, out, outside Taras, in, in the south of Italy. I've won a couple of important battles. I've got the Romans on the back foot, but I don't know if I can realistically actually get to Rome right now and pull it off. Um, in which case, uh, Pyrrhus, what he did was he decided not to march on Rome, and then he got distracted and wandered off to bloody Sicily to fight some wars there instead for a bit. Um... Throwing the history in the bin for a minute, because well, this isn't real history, this is a video game. I'm inclined to think that I don't really want to press on any further until I've got at least one more stack here to help defend Tarentum. Or defend, defend our back door into Italy, essentially, before we start marching forward. Uh, and give us a safe place to retreat to if we have to. Um, that's kind of my thinking at the moment. I mean, right now we need to deal with the Slave Revolt. That needs to be quashed. Um, what's left of it. Um, Scipio had a good go at it. He beat the snot out of them. But the ones that are left are our, now our job to mop up. Um, so, yeah, I kind of feel like I don't want to go anywhere until maybe um, these guys at least have arrived in, in on Italian soil. And then at that point, that's that for me is the green light to go ahead. Although, unfortunately, of course, 
every turn that we procrastinate is another turn the Romans can recruit additional units. And having just defeated a large army of theirs, I freed up a portion of their military budget to do exactly that. It was a, it was a crappy Camillan stack of units as well, so they'll be replacing it with shiny new Marian units like these, which is only going to make our job more difficult in the long run is the problem. So, And of course there's Brutus hanging out in his fleet here kind of making me wonder what on earth he's going to do next and uh, keeping me guessing, essentially. So that's the state of affairs right now, generally speaking. The main thing is uh, we need to get down here and squash these slaves. And now they've withdrawn. They've retreated. Interesting. Uh, is it worth going across the river to attack them? going slightly into enemy territory there. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll send... I think we'll send the Arcos to deal with this. There we go. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, see, I wanted to keep uh, Magarix over on this side of the river, because then he stays in our territory, which means his army will be replenished. Um, I'm more... I, I'd prefer his army to be replenished versus the Arcos's, because the Arcos just isn't as good. Um, I want to keep these tip-top elite troops at full strength, if possible for future battles. So, uh, yeah, we'll control a large army. And I am immensely tempted to auto-resolve this. I don't think I will, though, but I might give you a very condensed version of this particular battle, I think. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to go. It's a river-crossing battle, interestingly enough. And, um, yeah, here's the... Here are the escaped rebellious slaves, what's left of them, hanging out on this other side of the river. I've got on the other side of it my cavalry. And also the chariots at the other river crossing, a bit further up, they've uh, they've garrisoned this one as well, as you can see, with what little they've got. Uh, this is where the infantry are going to be crossing. They're ready to march across in in a big column. Got the baggage train at the back. Uh, yeah, there's nothing much else for it other than to get started. We do obviously have Magrix coming in as reinforcements, although I don't think we'll need them. So. We're just going to mosey on over there, really. Okay, they've... For a minute there, it looked like they were going to abandon this crossing, but we they've the changed the their units. minds, interestingly enough. I'm going to send across the cavalry. The, the chariots can wait here. We're sending the infantry out over there. At a pace. Oh, gosh. Frame rate's suffering a little bit with just this, this many infantry all on the screen at once. Oopsie daisy. What are they doing exactly? They've moved out into the trees here, maybe to get flanking fire into us? I'm not really sure. Yeah, this kind of looks like what they're doing, actually, yeah. They're throwing javelins at us from that side. Yep, here we go. Okay, uh... Go, go, go. All right, meanwhile, on this side, the cavalry are doing their thing. Just keep moving, actually. Get past the enemy and across the river. Oh, you can do it a bit faster than that, boys. There's no need to queue. <laughs> oh, dear. How are these going over here? Fine. We've sort of... <laughs> speaking of queuing. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, hello. Enemy cavalry. Interesting. All right, let's get the Italians, the Etruscans, up here, and the uh, the Sam Knights as well. Who's doing the shooting at the minute? Is that the Slingers in the back here? Yeah. Works for me. You guys are going to charge into melee. Attack us in our really, really long, exposed flank. There, it's probably smart to be fair. Right, you guys, I don't I don't really care for this friendly fire you've got going on at the minute, really. Not a fan. Must be said. What are you guys doing? Oh, you're chasing enemies off. You guys get over there. Yeah, send the cavalry over that way. The 
I really wish I could put chariots on like skirmish mode. But I don't think we can do that. Magrix has not arrived. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Let's grab some of his cavalry and bring them over here. Helen's going over here. Fine. The, uh, you know what, boys? Please stop. Oh, you guys are out of javelins now. Yeah, you are. That's all right. Did we get any of them? I'm not seeing any corpses, but they may have floated downstream. I'm not sure. Oh, right. Okay, no, there they are. There's some dead guys in there. They don't float away, do they, like in the original Rome Total War, but I suppose in a way it makes sense because a lot of these guys are wearing armor. Evan's going over here. Fine. Ooh. Javelin's right in the back. Yeah, one nice thing about these three, I feel. Three or four, Roy, or three is infantry, whatever we're going to call them. Is that they do have those abrasive javelins. It's quite nice. The shield wall infantry don't really have that going for them. But they are just really good at holding a line, these guys. It's interesting that this lot though, aren't they? They're uh They're Peltas, they you know, they're light missile infantry, but they obviously carry these these big extended quite long spears. They're not really pikes, but they're longer than your average spear. I suppose it's probably to help them defend against cavalry, right? It's quite an interesting unit. So obviously the Achilles heel of the Peltash really is just the cavalry that will run him down. But these guys have a bit of a fighting chance against them, I assume, is the idea. Unless they're running away, of course, in which case you're yeah, new boned. Oh wow, they just stabbed the last guy and they all cheered. Oh, it looks like some of the chariots have javelins left. Alright, well, I guess, you know what? You might as well all come down here. You'll get here quicker than the other guys will, so... Uh, a bunch of spearmen. Dealing with you using cavalry is going to be hard. Unless, of course, you turn around. This is the bit where I get my chariots destroyed. Because I'm being impatient. Wouldn't be the first time! So much for giving you a condensed version of this battle. I thought I was just going to skip through most of it, but uh, actually, then, because it, it turned out to be a river battle, it's become slightly more interesting. Okay, yeah. Yeah, they've turned around and gone defensive. Let's, uh... Let's not go plowing straight headfirst into them. That would be dumb. Gosh, it takes you guys a while to turn around, doesn't it? It's a good thing they haven't decided to seize the advantage there and charge us. He's going over here, everybody making their way down the hill, you know. Well, we've taken this river crossing without any bother at all. Um, I'm sure there were some guys that made it out there. But, um, you know, we wiped out most of them. All right, folks. We're approaching the river. Waited quite a while to get these uh, spear guys up and ready. Bringing in more troops from over here. But they're taking their sweet time. In fact, don't, don't run. There's no rush. Uh, the enemy's decided to try and cross again now that I've got my archers in range. So they're trying to close the distance, but um, it's a bit hopeless, really. I mean... Yeah, these guys are already wavering. Brave of these slaves to actually give it a give it a go. Give me freedom or give me death and all that, but um, actually, it seems like a lot of them have already decided, you know what, actually? Maybe this whole freedom or death thing 
is a little overrated. Uh, I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs> and that's that's that. All right. All right. Well, that's that dealt with. We lost 79 guys doing that. Um, I believe we shall probably kill the captives, actually, because, you know feel like you have to do that with escaped slaves. It's a bit dark, but that's probably what they would have done with them, I, I have to imagine. Slave uprising crushed. Yep. The strong will always beat the weak. It is the way of the world and the will of the gods. Bad luck, fellas. All right, let's move you back over here. It's tempting to leave you actually just across the river there to do a bit of raiding, but that might provoke a reaction I don't want to provoke just yet, if you see what I mean. So I think we'll leave it alone for now. Ready for battle. I live to serve the Our people of God and your ancestors. Um. Okay. Right. That's that dealt with. And. I think it's time to end the turn, more or less. I can't think of anything else we need to do right now. Tyrannus, strike them Other than down. I might have to merge a few units here and hire a few mercenaries to replace the losses due to the siege attrition at some point. Because uh, that's definitely been a bit of a problem. Uh, ugh, man, laying siege to port city is always, always, always a pain in the ass. The, uh, the 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 siege takes twice as long if it's a port city, you see, because they can supply it by the by ocean, you know, obviously. So, unless you blockade it as well, I suppose, uh, which I'm not able to do because the Romans have basically total naval supremacy right now. Unfortunately, it's kind of difficult to work around that, but it is what it is. All right, folks, it's been a bit of time. It's May of 265 BC now. Um, Spring is wearing on, so, uh, winter is behind us. Abelios has been scouting his way up Italy to sort of trigger out what's going on up here, and he can't seem to find any other Roman armies over in this direction at all. Um, there are, however, no Germanic armies either. The Leogoths don't seem to have any armies around here. It's weird. There might be a battle going on over here somewhere, you know, like a big stack of... Germans over there fighting a stack of Romans or something, I'm not sure. They're continuing to investigate in this direction, but basically the Romans don't seem to have any armies defending this. They're, most of their armies are over here in Sicily. Um, which, I suppose, if you're thinking about it from the AI's perspective, it sort of makes sense, because Sicily is roughly the centre of their empire right now. Um, so that's where they've kind of concentrated all their armies around Syracuse. Um, they seem unwilling to march up here and deal with this, which is kind of fascinating. I don't know why the AI is being a bit passive right now. It's a bit of a shame, actually, if anything. But they don't really want to engage us. They're just kind of staying put here. Um, meanwhile, up here, I've got Iarkos doing a bit of raiding because our, um, our income each turn is, is kind of sucking. It's not very good. Um, I mean, losing Apollonia certainly didn't help with that, but... Uh, yeah, we're supplementing the uh, the budget right now by uh, raiding Roman territory, and um, yeah, this there's this army here, this tiny little uh, Legio Eleven Fratensis, hanging out here, eight units led by uh, Arminius Cotta, but that's it basically. That's the only Roman armies over here, so I could make a break for Rome, I reckon. Um, I have a feeling if I start moving out, though, these guys might start making a move. Brutus, I noticed, he did decide to stop being a fleet and come back on land and start moving this direction. But he hasn't moved any further yet. Meanwhile, our armies over here are slowly making their way towards Apollonia. And uh, we are actually now in range to attack it, finally. Um, I've, I've renamed this army Olegio Lentulus. Um, for obvious reasons. And, uh, yeah, they're going to lead the attack on Apollonia, I think. Which is going to be weird, though, because, like, I suppose they'll have a town garrison of some sort. Um, yeah, a pretty depleted one, but they'll also have these boats, which I think will start on boats. They'll probably, you know, beach themselves and, and disembark when the battle starts. I'm not sure. I hope they do, anyway. I've, I've had issues in the past with, uh, 
with Rome 2 and Attila where you have uh, where you attack a city that has a bunch of uh, has a fleet in port whereby like the fleet refuses to land and therefore the battle goes on indefinitely if you don't have uh, battle time limits turned on normally I don't but I think just to be on the safe side I'm going to turn on a 60 minute battle timer for this one because I've had, I've, yeah, I've had, uh, I've had that happen. I don't know if it, I've had it happen in Rome too, but I've definitely had it happen in Attila before, where, uh, yeah, the battle basically just got stuck because the enemy fleet wouldn't disembark and defend their town. Uh, so, yeah, let's just do that before we go any further. I don't think there's anything else to take care of right now. All quiet in the east. This little tiny. Uh, retinue here belonging to Meshan is making its way through my territory again and I'm perfectly happy for them to do that I mean we don't actually have military access but you know what they're not causing any harm so whatever um, the Ptolemies are still being annoying and refusing to help besiege Cyrene um, even though I, I cleared the war target set it again I got a message in the following turn saying our allies are moving to the war target kind of doesn't look like it though if I'm honest Kind of looks like they're very much not doing that. How irritating. Never mind. Uh, hmm. Royal Spy. Look at that. Very different looking portrait. Uh, that's one of the Ptolemy's units, that one. Not my, it's not mine. Um, right, anyway, so that's how things stand. Let's take back Apollonia, shall we? Uh, let's march straight on in, I suppose, and hopefully the uh, naval units won't wig out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, normally I would say the tribe is ready for war, but today the legion is ready for war. Oh, they're so beautiful. Oh, do they not look glorious? Oh, I'm so happy. I've been waiting this whole Let's Play to get the uh, Galatian legionaries on the field. <laughs> I'm so happy. Anyway, yeah, uh, here they are. I've got them all deployed out in a standard sort of checkerboard formation, three ranks deep. Um, we've got a unit. It's such a basic army as well. I mean, that's basically it. We've got the checkerboard of legionaries, a unit of noble cavalry on each flank, and obviously the general with his bodyguard in the center at the back here. And that's, that's it. That's the army. Uh, arguably, you could probably chuck in, you know, remove a couple of these legionary units at the back here in, in the stack and add some uh, you know archers or maybe some skirmishers but uh, honestly like this is such a this is such an excellent force here to tell you the truth it's so very good um Galatians! it's worth noting we can have a little play around with these guys they can do various different things they can form a square to repel cavalry or if they're surrounded um let's see what the description says proves defense against cavalry and flanking infantry but reduces attack and the units unable to move uh, they can form a defensive formation, which reduces attack and boosts defense, I think. Improves morale and defense, but lowers attack. Uh, they can also do a defensive dis testudo, which they won't actually raise the shields up until I tell them to sort of... until we hit start battle, but you get the idea. Um, in fact, I think we shall demonstrate right now. Do a bit of parade ground drill here. Ruthless and professional. Form to Studo! Our reinforcements have arrived. Oh yes, it's the reinforcing stack in the background. We probably won't need them today. There we go. I think the front rank, once they're in position, they'll probably kneel down and... Yes, there you go. Point, point their spears out there, their little javelins out. It's a beautiful thing. whole army can do that. All of these little maneuvers. Uh, also can tell them where to throw their javelins as well if we want to. They're the heavy javelins. Alright, so there's the Roman fleet. Uh, looks like they might be heading over here to disembark on this beach. Their garrison, the city garrison such as it is, is deployed over here. Um, I think... Yeah, I'm trying to figure out exactly what these lads are up to. I think I might redeploy the army over in this direction for now. Uh, you guys do not need to run. That's really, really unnecessary. Okay. Alright. 
I'll just watch and see how things progress. Folks, combat has begun effectively because the enemy started chucking projectiles at us. To Strudo! Throw some bloody rocks at me, will you? Yeah, that seems like the enemy's suicidally coming towards us, which uh, they've done in previous siege battles, to be fair. Pay attention to where the enemy's firing their missiles and then rotate our testudos as becomes necessary. They're chucking a lot of you guys right now. There you go. Uh, out go the heavy javelins. One of our units has used all its ammunition. I think you guys probably have a decent charge bonus. Let me just pause it for a moment. Yeah, pretty hefty charge bonus. You are goals at the end of the day. So let's take advantage of it. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Bring you guys up in the slot. You can move up to occupy that space. You guys can move up that way. And I think we'll bring up you guys in this direction. Cavalry, let's move out. Enemy's already wavering. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Gonna get stuck in. All right, it's going well so far. We're gonna have a lot of that bloody pop up. One of our units has used all of its ammunition because every single unit in the army has javelins. those Cretan archers. Take them out. What have we got here? Classiari. Yeah, these are all naval units, a lot of these. Which makes them a little confusing to deal with, frankly. Sure, our nobles can take care of them though in a stand up fight. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Their admiral, I was going to say general, but really admiral, is right there. Chase them off for now. You guys can go after them. Ah, their admiral is wavering now. Like he realizes the jig is up. His whole army is basically running away, and that's the lot, ladies and gentlemen. They've had enough. The Galatian legionaries have came, seen, and conquered. I'm very happy to say, although you know what, these uh, veteran 
legionary marine type dudes here. These these were probably tough cookies, actually. I wouldn't be surprised if we took a fair chunk of casualties over here in the middle as a result of them. But most of their units were actually, yeah, kind of light missile stuff. So I'm just going to go ahead and end battle. 129 losses. Yeah, that's not, that's actually, on the whole, not too bad. I think, yeah, one of couple of our cohorts took a little bit of a mauling there, probably the ones that were in the middle. In fact, I think one of them took quite a lot of missile hits in spite of being in Tessudo. That sort of blunted their missile attack a little bit, but they were getting really nailed back there, I did notice. So, that's probably where a lot of it came from. In fact, we can see, really, if we look at this. Uh, oh, maybe not, actually. Seven kills for those guys, two kills for their Cretan archers, three kills for these guys. Right, I take it back. No, I think it was yeah, I think it was these heavier infantry that did most of the killing for them, especially them there. Uh, might have been a bit of friendly fire in, in the mix too, actually. Alright, there we go. We'll just reoccupy it. There shall be no rapine and plunder today, gentlemen. Um... Let's get the stone crows in port. Next time we can move both of you out across the straits, I'm hoping. Ready for orders. Must be planned anyway. Ah, yes, yeah, something interesting happened during the end turn sequence, actually, that I think I may have forgotten to mention. Apologies if I already have and I'm repeating myself, but... Uh, the Illyrians, who up until this point have played basically no part in this war, they actually decided to get a couple of fleets together, one out of Athens and one from a bit further up the coast here. They decided to come out to play, and they uh, sank a Roman fleet that was hanging around out here, um, which I am delighted about. I, it looks like we've we've completely totaled that other Roman fleet that wasn't in port here, and none of, them, none of them have fled on their boats. So that's two Roman fleets sent to the bottom of the Mediterranean, effectively, um, in the last turn. Mostly, though, thanks to the um, the Illyrians, because they came out in here and did a number on the Romans, which, uh, you know bully for them, I guess. I mean, they're no slacks. They've got proper, you know, naval units, you know, with triremes and whatnot. They're Liburnians and and, and, and and whatever you call them. Liburners with Illyrian troops on them. You know, they're, um, they're famously pirates, the Illyrians, so they know their way around the ocean, that's for sure. They're not quite like us. Um... Yeah, speaking of pirates, actually, I did get a, I did get a notification that there are pirates off the coast of Sea Day. Or that they were targeting C Day anyway. Um, so I have actually recruited a little mercenary fleet over here at C Day to defend it. I just forgot to put it in port just now, but yeah, like uh, that, we, as we've had one at Rhodes for a while, um, I decided to recruit one at C Day just to sort of deter any potential pirate attacks. Uh, it's, it's chewing a hole in the budget, unfortunately, but there's not much I can do about it. I think we need it there to make sure C Day doesn't get taken by pirates, especially since like, my, my sort of emergency backup army that was here in Anatolia is now over here. Uh, yes. I, I, we really may, need to make sure that the pirates don't get any silly ideas. Hopefully the Ptolemies can deal with them if it becomes necessary, but I don't know. Also, I have just noticed that Salamis is Roman. Uh, the Romans have Cyprus. Which, I, I don't know how or when that happened, but um, crumbs. They're a bit far from home, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, that's about the shape of things at the moment. Um, Iarkos is still doing a bit of raiding. There seems to be no movement anywhere else for the moment. But uh, we took back Apollonia, and I think that's going to... That that happening might spur some, some potential action going forwards, I don't know. We shall see. Uh, can you guys recruit anything here? No, the, the the manpower cost is pretty prohibitive. I mean, you've got a full stack anyway, but I could have maybe disbanded something if if I felt it necessary. All right. Anyway, uh, folks, I shall return. All right, it's now June. We're in the tail end of spring at the moment. Um, our treasury is not looking amazingly healthy at the moment, unfortunately. Uh, we have pirates over here doing some raiding. They're awfully close to a Fessos. It makes me a little nervous, honestly. Uh, don't like that. Don't like that at all. I don't like the idea of the pirates coming over here taking a Fessos and then maybe the, to the, the not the not the Ptolemies, Pergamon 
running in and taking it back for themselves. That would be very, 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 very irritating. And I don't like it. I have no idea what to do about these damn pirates. They're a serious problem. Um, best I can maybe do is... Oh, really? Can I not set a war coordination here. target on... On this pirate fleet? That's that's kind of irritating. Not gonna lie. I suppose I can bite Before them off, can I? Before you say anything, know that I have an amulet against the evil eye. Dark sorcery will gain you naught. How much you guys want to leave me the frick alone? A, a preposterous amount. More than money than I have, apparently. Okay, uh... Uh, okay then, fine. I uh, guess I'm going to have to blow more money on raising another little fleet here to deter them. There we go. Hopefully that'll keep them away. It doesn't seem to take much to actually deter them from attacking a settlement, but um, yeah. If they actually were to attack, they'd completely overwhelm the garrison. I don't know why they... I mean, obviously there's an auto-resolve calculation there, which means, seems to make makes it makes it so that the pirate AI seems to think it can't win, so it's not attacking, um, which I'm happy about, but still, I feel like if they actually did attack, they'd probably kick my ass. Anyway, the uh, Stone Crows are over here in um, in Italy. They've made it across the straits. Uh, Legio Lentulus is going to have to wait until next turn to be able to do it in one hop, uh, and I don't want to get caught out in the middle of the ocean because there's Roman fleet still marauding about the place. Uh, this is actually uh, Brutus. He's he's re-embarked upon his ships again. In fact, all the all the armies that were over here that I could see have disappeared, which is concerning. Um, he's actually embarked on a ship again, it, and he, he did it as soon as I took Apollonia as well. I think he's he might be sailing over here to try and retake Apollonia again. The uh, the Roman AI seems to have a real hard on for that city for some reason. Um, but anyway, these guys are over here. Their army looks a bit different, and that's because I decided to reinforce Caxtos's claws, Iarcos's army, with all of these um, backup legionaries. So this army now under Iarcos has been transformed a little bit and is a hell of a lot beefier than it was before. I gave the leftover units basically to Adgenios here, and he's just going to sort of march around outside Taras, you know just existing I guess <laughs> um, the time is ripe to march on Rome I don't want to do it though until Legio Lentulus has arrived basically uh, I think I want to take Legio Lentulus and Magarix to Rome they're going to march on Rome um, Iarcos and the Stone Crows here under Adgenios they're going to basically hold down the fort here at Taras um, is the general general idea. I don't know whether that's the best idea to be honest with you. I feel like Magarix and Lentulus need to be the guys who take Rome. It just feels like that has that's the way it has to be, even though actually, arguably, all the Roman armies are down here, and that's actually probably where we should be sending those our two best stacks. Um, but honestly, there's like nothing up here. There is one army over here, Legio VI Gemina, led by Navius Fullo, uh, hanging around up here near Genua, which... Uh, our scout has managed to spot, but that's the only Roman army I can find in this whole neck of the woods. The rest of this is all completely undefended. Um, including Medlan up here, which doesn't seem to have anyone defending it either. So it's weird. Uh, the Leogoths and the Romans are at war, but only on paper, it would seem, because if they're doing any fighting, it's clearly happening elsewhere. Anyway, that's the state of things. I'm going to hit end turn now, and uh, I guess we'll see if anything interesting happens. The Romans have been awfully timid lately, so... I don't know what to expect. Oh yeah, the Ptolemies are continuing to be very, very unhelpful over here at Kyrene. Of course. In fact, actually, you know what? I think we may have to do a little bit of merging here. And yeah, disband you. Merge you as well. And disband you. And we'll hire some appropriate mercenaries to replace you with. These guys will do. Because, uh, yes, our besieging army is continuing to take attrition damage, unfortunately. But uh, as, the, as the army slowly transforms into a mercenary stack, um, the siege does continue. 
five turns remaining until the Romans surrender, apparently. I don't know if they've got anyone inbound to help out, but uh, I've actually decided to redirect Preto over here because I'd ra much rather go know what's going on in this neck of the woods, and unfortunately, the our druid, Samilla, is okay. not a very talented spy. The little army of Marian legionaries that was hanging around here near Beneventum, that seems to have buggered off somewhere, and I don't know where right now, which concerns me. So, All right. Um, as our treasury looks a little bit dire down there, minus 2,502 a turn. Gotta love it. Uh, time to hit the end turn, but in fact, oh gosh, you know what? Our treasury in general has been very, very knackered, hasn't it? Um, there is a thing we can do. It's a little risky, but it's a thing we can do. Uh, where's Actawanes? There she is. Uh, she's got very high cunning, which allows her to do something handy, which is embezzle funds. Impair the treasury through dishonesty and creative accounting. Gain 3,200 in coins, minus three loyalty for all other parties for four turns. Costs you some gravitas to do that. Uh, so that's lined our coffers a little bit. I think I might do it again, actually. Well, that's bought us a couple of extra turns. Um, of, of Dosh. I could raise taxes again, theoretically. I just don't know if that's a really good idea, quite frankly, because uh, public order's not looking fantastic in some of our provinces these days. So, yeah, mostly I think it's, it's the mercenary fleets I've had to hire that are draining my, uh, draining my treasure at the minute, and it's all because of these irritating pirates. About which I can do basically nothing. Uh, yeah. Bastards. <laughs> Pain in the ass. Ah, anyway. End turn. Let's see what the Romans do. If anything. They seem very, very, very... Timid about counter-attacking lately. Oh, that army's moved off towards the direction of Cisalpine Gaul. This army's moved back here to Syracuse. They're being very indecisive again, it seems. Interesting. Well, summer is upon us, or it will be very, very shortly, and uh, yeah, Magarix and Lentulus are going to be marching up Italy towards Rome itself, even though the Romans themselves seem to have decided that Syracuse is a much more important city than Rome. <laughs> Whatever. All right, it's time, folks. It is July, and we're ready to go rock and roll. The Doom Pigs and Legio Lentulus are ready to march uh, on Beneventum. Uh, it's about time we did it, honestly. Um, I'm going to march Magrits up here. I'm going to get Vercasa Valaunos to lead the attack on this one, just so that he's considered to be the one leading the battle, and therefore Legio Lentulus and himself will get experience versus Magrix getting it. Because um, Magrix and the Doom Pigs have got plenty of XP at this point. They really don't need any more. Uh, ah, I see. Legio 11 for Tensis is actually in the city. Well, that's going to make the battle slightly more interesting. I mean, they're still the Romans are still utterly boned, but uh, <laughs> I'll take it. That's a bit more interesting. Do a little quick save before we get started. All right, folks, we're ready to go. We're all deployed. Legio Lentulus in all its glory is here. Magarix's army is going to be coming along behind us right here, and I'll get them all formed up in formation as well. Um, but uh, yes, we're ready to go. The Romans, the ones of them that we can see are deployed over here at the moment. Seems to be a lot of militia and whatnot, isn't it? For the most part over here. But in amongst them somewhere, there's a bunch of Marian legionaries who are going to be definitely trickier to deal with. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Let's start battle. And here come the Doom Pigs. We'll be uh, getting them up in formation and get everything sorted out, and then we'll march over towards Enemy the Romans if approaching. they don't decide to come to us first, of course. Maybe they're just moving up to secure the higher ground, I'm not sure. We'll see.
Alright folks, the battle lines do appear to be drawn up. The Romans have gotten themselves into a position on the on this hill. We're lined up opposite them. I've got the Legion basically in their checkerboard formation, and I've got Magarix's half kind of in their usual formation with the spear wall in front and the uh the Galatian guard in back. And really all that is there left for there for us to do is to order the advance. Would you like to do the honors, Magrix? Uh Off you go, everybody. It's a beautiful thing to see in motion. Love it. What's the Roman view like up here from there? First cohort with the legionary eagle. I'm loving this shot right here. I may have overused it a bit in the video. I'm not sure. <laughs> not sure yet. I'll I'll know when I get to the editing stage. But yep, the Galatians are moving towards you, boys. And they've got a fair few missile units up here, which I'm assuming will probably open fire soon. However, we do have, thanks to Magrix's army. Our wonderful Cretan and Syrian archers. These Syrians, man, they've been with us for a long time. These guys, they have, they're, they're a lot, they're a long way from home. We picked these guys up back when Magrix was campaigning around in the east against the Seleucids. They're still with us, and they're like really, really experienced as well. Okay. Move a bit further up, I think. Gosh, don't you just love the scale of the battles in Rome too? It feels absolutely massive. I mean, it's still nowhere near the size of these, these the, 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 the size that these battles would have been fought in real life. They're even bigger in real life. But still, gosh, it feels gigantic, doesn't it? That's what she said. I know, I know, I know. Shut up. All right. Noble horse. All right. They're opening fire, so... Chop, chop. Double time it. Uh, is this heavy art, heavy shot cavalry? It's not... Not a bodyguard. That's Magarix. Cast of Alonis over there. I think I really need you out in flank. Oh, hello. Oh, cavalry charge right in the face. Oh, here come the heavy javelins. What was that? Equites late. Yeah. One of our units has used all its ammunition. You guys, defensive formation. Love the front rank in defensive formation, and uh, the the guys in the slots can remain in offensive formation. Shield wall for you lot. Us. Oh, but isn't the spectacle wonderful? Roman versus Galatian legionaries is so good. This is the first cohort getting stuck in it is, yeah. There's the standard bearer. Oh, it's a beautiful thing, boys and girls. Been waiting to see this the entire campaign. I should probably stop gawking and make sure we don't lose this battle, but hey. One of our units has used all this Shut ammunition. up, Marcus. Goodness me, man. Alright. Get the Sam Knights and our nobles out on that flank moving around. How are things going over here? The noble cav have done their work. You can come out of defensive formation. Units has used all its ammunition. Get some javelins into the back of those legionaries. And charge. Yeah, this Roman army isn't going to break 
at the drop of a hat. Let's bring around these naked fanatics as well. There we go, the Galatian Noble Cavalry. Into the back of, I think, a bunch of Italians or Sam Knights. Yeah, no Italians. Uh, what's this over here? Decimus Vento. Looks like that's the governor's unit. Some javelins into the back of them. And then naked fanatics, you do what naked fanatics do. Oh, hello. Let's hope this over here. Unit of legionaries has formed up and is throwing javelins at our cavalry. I don't think we'll be having that. Thank you very much. Get a charge into the back of those Prinkipes. Come back out again. We'll cycle charge it. In fact, forget chasing those fleeing dudes over there. For the moment. Alright, you guys ammunition. out of defensive formation, you get stuck in, we'll move someone in to fill the gap. Okay. Naked fanatics. Keep rolling up the flank here. Cavalry doing its thing. We're just beating on these Romans like a drum at the moment, aren't we? But yeah, those Marian units, they are... They're keeping the line together, really. I think that first cohort they've got in there is definitely helping them because it'll be boosting their morale and what have you. Beautiful stuff. I wonder where their standard bearer is. Maybe he's already gone down. Oh, hello. Hello, Cotter. How are you doing? Former square. Who's wavering? Uh, this unit of legionaries in the middle here. They Are they up against the first cohort by any chance? They're, they're up against the legionary veterans, yeah. All right, full back. Or try to, anyway. Send in the reserves at this end. Uh, let's bring up the Thorax infantry here. Oh, that's some of the naked fanatics, isn't it? Alright. Yeah, this flank has been completely defeated. They did charge the square. Look at that. We missed it, but the uh, but Cotter did try and charge the square and failed miserably. Love to see it. Alright, you guys form a square as well. Oh, we're going to get cavalry sandwich here, I think. And that's it. The battle is won. Ladies and gentlemen, we fought our first real proper Roman army, it feels like. And uh, the odds were stacked very heavily against the Romans, but I tell you what, they gave us a real good punch in the face. Regardless. Those Marian units are no friggin' joke, man. I think you've read they they're only like only about like a quarter of their army consisted of Marian legionaries, but I think you've just you've witnessed what they're capable of anyway. I don't think we need to mess around running a lot of these survivors down, to be honest. Because it, this was technically a city battle. They sallied out to fight us in the field, but it was a city battle, which means that 
none of these guys are going to survive, I don't think. But we'll chase them down anyway, just because it makes sense to do so. say is that we lost just shy of 500 men in that battle which uh, is not too bad actually we got some definite rank ups across the board some some of these uh, legionaries have already made it to a silver chevron the cavalry got, uh, got quite a few rank ups as well they've been doing very well actually these uh, these noble cav um, I think I've been microing them a little bit better than perhaps I usually do to be fair and uh, hey, the naked fanatic's got a rank up as well. Very nice. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you know that you know that you know the drill at this point, folks. We loot, and we actually do need the money these days too. So, um, Is there nothing else? yes, please. Legio Lentulus has in fact ranked up. Magrix is ranked up as well. He's ranked ten now. Good God grief. All. all right. Well, let's uh, let's do this then. Er, uh, what? Patron of the military is probably a good idea right now. Reduce upkeep a bit. Uh, train swordsman. Courage. Uh, I want to kind of think about going for the last rank of skilled tactician. Or the last rank of trained swordsman. I'll go for trained swordsman, I think. Oh, um, oh, we can do both. We can do all of them, in fact, it looks like. There we go. There we go, he's now max rank. We have maxed out Magarix. He's got all of his skills maxed, which is pretty sweet, actually. Uh, now then, let's have a look over here. Legio Lentulus, they can pick a tradition! Let's see. Uh, we'll go with Wolves of the North, I think. Um, Rapine Plunderers for the... We're, we're going to potentially be besieging Rome very shortly, you see. So, yeah, I kind of want to... And it will be this army doing the besieging as well because I don't want to... It, Magrix's army is like 50% uh, Galatian Guard at this point and they are, they are like this almost the top tier of population in terms of the man, where, they, where they get their replenishment manpower from. So losing those guys to attrition in a siege is a really stupid idea. So we're not going to do that. Um, we'll have the Legion besiege Rome instead. Uh, Rampart Takers, Hearth Bear Guard, Formidable Fighters, Unrelenting Force. Let's take that out for more morale, shall we? We changed the emblem, actually. I didn't really think about doing that before, but uh, not that there's a ton to choose from right now. But uh, I think I quite like that very standard looking boar. It looks like the ones that the guys carry in the units. So uh, there you go. We'll go with that. Um, right. Ready for Tempting to bring you guys down here to take Sentia, actually. Warriors Give us a bit of buffer space, wouldn't it? Although, oh, public order here is really not good. Mostly because of, you know the town we just uh, looted. Also, I've discovered, actually, that um, converting some of Taras's buildings is proving difficult because uh, the Allied Capital building they've got right now, I don't have enough tech to actually uh, convert it into whatever our equivalent would be, uh, which is a little bit annoying. So not a very efficient settlement for us at the moment, unfortunately. Um, but never mind. Gaul is murder to us all! Move out of the town. Oh yeah, there we go. That's massively lowered the uh, the discontent just by moving the army out of the city. All right, so Beneventum is ours. That will help our finances somewhat. As did the big pile of loot we just got. And then Rome stands within spitting distance, practically. Very good. We're getting some replenishment on the go as well, which is nice to see cool. Uh, now the question is, do I want to get greedy and go after Cassentia? I don't really have eyes on what's going on over here. There could be a Roman army or two here, and I just don't know it. 
Discretion may be the better part of valor here, I don't know. Whether it's worth wasting men on taking Cassentia right now. Then again, we do kind of need the money, so perhaps we should consider it. Hmm. What's Taris's garrison looking like these days? It's still only partially replenished since we took the place. And it's not a very good garrison to begin with either. You know what? I think we're going to do it. We're going to live dangerously. Live like a Galatian. Uh, I think, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to fight this battle manually. But unless something bizarre and interesting happens, you probably won't see it. Well, that went about as well as expected. Yep, we lost about 200 dudes and crushed the enemy completely. Very nicely done. Didn't take too many casualties there. Some of the cavalry got a little bit mauled. Uh, mostly because the enemy general decided to plow straight into them when I wasn't looking. Um, so, uh, good for him, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, a little irritating. Um, liberating them would be kind of funny, wouldn't it? But no, uh, we'll loot it. For the tribe. For and hello there. Legio 10 Macedonica. What's, well, there's not much of it. There's six units led by Achilleus Capito, but they're just hanging around there right now. I wonder by coming a bit closer like this, we may have bitten off more than we could chew. I, I hope not, but I have this feeling, you know, like we might have provoked them by doing this. <laughs> uh, let's repair these bits and bobs anyway. Minus 71 public order. Oh boy, we've made people quite unhappy, haven't we? <laughs> uh, how much is that? It, minus 80 from Conquest. Good grief. Good heavens. <laughs> taking taking two cities in the same province in one turn. Apparently, that conquest penalty stacks, ladies and gentlemen. I actually genuinely wasn't sure if that was the case or not. This has been a fun experiment to find out, though. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. But look at that, man. Just look at that. We've turned Magna Graecia green. Our empire's really starting to look like an empire these days. It's beautiful, isn't it? All right, uh, but, you know, the full wrath of the Romans still awaits us. Maybe by taking Cosentia, that will actually rouse them from their uh, masterly inactivity we've been witnessing so far. Maybe they'll actually bloody do something. I don't know. But uh, we'll find out, I suppose. <laughs> 